Good morning, church. Good morning, church. What a joy to meet you online on this wonderful day that the Lord has made. In fact, the Word of God says, let's rejoice and be glad because this is the day that the Lord has made. Unprecedented times like this require... We need to have unique responses. In fact, unique responses are real, real uh, thing that we need to be doing in these times. In fact, uh, uh, in the 47 years of church history of New Life Assemblies of God Church, we have always gathered together. Maybe we began in a small little house where we gathered together. Then we went from building to building. And there were times that we went through fire, we went through floods, but we gathered under the trees. We gathered in smaller places. But this is unprecedented that we are gathering together in our own homes as individuals and families. But yet in the spirit, we are gathering together as a whole church of Jesus Christ. And these are unprecedented times. In fact, the world is going through a lot of difficulty, of chaos and confusion, fear. And so much uh, is happening, slow down, economy is slowing down. There is a lockdown happening in the city and cities and, and many nations. While these things are going on, we need to have unique responses. And we as a church, we want to respond uniquely. There are five responses that we want to talk about this morning. Even as you hear us, even as you are enjoying the presence of God, I want you to hear and respond because this is what the Spirit of the Lord wants us to do. And the first response is it's time to humble ourselves. It is time for us to humble and intercede. Solomon, while he built that temple, he recorded this. And this is what the Word of God says. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. If you, in fact, if you see the context of this verse, you would see that if I would shut the heavens or if there would be famine that would come or if there be locusts that come and devour the crops or there is a plague amongst the people. In fact, we are going through a pandemic that is so very viral across the entire world. It is time that we humble ourselves. It is time to humble and intercede. We need to pray as individuals, as families, as a church and as churches. In Numbers chapter 16 and verse 47 and 48 we read, As Aaron did as Moses said and ran into the midst of the assembly, the plague already started among the people, but Aaron offered the incense and made atonement for them. He stood between the living and the dead and the plague stopped. When the Israelites grumbled against their leaders and against God, a plague came upon them. But immediately Moses instructed Aaron to go amidst the assembly and to make an atonement for them. The plague had already started, but when Aaron offered the incense and when he made the atonement, the plague stopped. It's time for us to rise together as a church to pray and to intercede. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to stand together in oneness, in unity, to pray and to intercede so that this pandemic will stop. In fact, right now, Wherever we are, in your own homes, would you lift up your hands? Everyone, everywhere, would you lift up your hands? And let's lift up our hands together and let us pray together that God would stop this pandemic. That God would do something that will be, that will be miraculous, that will be marvelous. And ask the church together, New Life Assemblies of God churches, wherever you are, in whichever center you used to attend on Sunday services, wherever you are, stop at this moment. Would you lift up your hands together? And would you ask God, God of heaven and earth, would you come and stop? Lord, you have said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble, Lord, we as a church humble ourselves. We repent of our wicked ways. We ask and seek your face and we say, please stop this. Please stop this. Only you can. We depend on you. We ask of you. Would you do this for us? You're a miracle working God. Just when Moses prayed and Aaron prayed, oh Father, you stopped that plague in a day. 
the same way oh father i pray oh father that you would come and you will stop this plague you will stop this epidemic you will stop this pandemic we trust you for you are sovereign god we ask for your mercy we ask for your grace in jesus name we pray amen amen our second response we live in a very fast paced world everything is running so fast everything is so instantaneous even if our internet slows down we get so irritated but in this moment the whole world is slowing down the whole world is coming to a rest the whole world is getting into some form of a lockdown it's okay to slow down it's okay to lock down in fact if you really look into the scriptures we see that noah and his family were in a lockdown situation for a whole year but the lord had closed that door for the sake of safety for the sake of protection when everyone else was getting affected by the flood and perishing this one family because of a lockdown because they were in an ark protected so we pray our oh father that we as we are in a slow down our as we are locking our homes and staying our oh father i pray that you will protect you will seal and you will not allow any of these sicknesses to continue on and to spread at these times of lockdown at these times of slow down it's time that we reflect and think it's time uh, uh, to think about uh, apostles being locked down in prisons and they wrote incredibly what the word of the lord is for the churches lockdown times and slow down times are not inactive times they are precious times that god can use think about the way jesus asked us to pray in matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 but when you pray go into your room close the door pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you in fact we have a, a wonderful acrostic put together for you listen to what slow down can mean for us in this season yes it's time for us to slow down s seek him l listen to his voice o obey his word and w worship him D don't ever give up O overcome anxiety W wait patiently for God to act and N nullify the powers of darkness Yes even as we slow down we seek him we ask God to do something for us as we wait patiently and he will help us nullify the forces of darkness the third response in unprecedented times like this It's time for us to increase our faith and not give into any form of fear. Take heart, Jesus said in John chapter 16 and verse 33. Take heart. In this world we will have troubles. It's prophesied. Yes, in this world we will have troubles. But take heart, Jesus said. Have faith, Jesus said. For I have overcome the world. We too as a church, we too as an example to the world we as a world together we will overcome because jesus is with us jesus is with us but he has said that we should not fear fear not for god has not given us a spirit of fear isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2 we read but now this is what the lord says he who created you Jacob he who formed you Israel do not fear for i have redeemed you i have summoned you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters i will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire you will not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze we don't have to fear take heart be of courage don't risk going out be wise but be people of faith be people of faith and do not fear the fourth response 
Are we together as a church? We need to really think through and respond is that it's time to be socially interconnected while we are being physically distant. Janta curfew that our Honorable Prime Minister has said that we would observe this day is just, I believe, is a, is a drill for situations to come. Physical distancing, they say, is the only means by which we can overcome and outbeat this virus. In fact, research and the recent research of this virus has helped us understand that this is a, a unique kind of virus that has jumped on from an animal into a, a human being. And it's been so mutant that it has had the capacity and the capability to move from humans to humans. And they suspect that there are already two strains and therefore there's absolutely no vaccine and there's no clear-cut medical uh, instruction what needs to be taken or medicines to be taken and therefore the situation is so very difficult and so very different than all other things that we have uh, faced and therefore our bodies don't have uh, the, the, the capacity to fight this virus and so the greatest and wise instruction that people from all over the world give us that is that we would be physically distant from one another and to maintain ourselves for the sake of our own self and for the sake of others and especially that we would be careful that we will not infect those who have difficulties in their life that they are already going through certain medical situations or for the elderly who are amongst us for we honor our elders and we respect them but while we are physically distant and this term of social dis distance, we shouldn't be socially disconnected from one another. It is time that we socially interconnect. That's the church. Church is a social interconnection. Church is a social network. We can be physically distant, but not that we don't know one another. And that's why I'm so excited about all the households, all the life groups. We are so very socially connected. And these moments and times, we are not distant from one another. We are socially interconnected. So yes, it's time for the family to be together. It's time that we take up our phone, call one another, pray with one another, encourage one another. It's time for us to stay in touch and stay connected. It's time, fifthly and finally, it's time for us to help one another. It is not time for us to hoard. If you actually look into some of the videos that have been going on especially in the western world and in the major and, and in, in in the highly affluent world and this is not a problem for indians i believe but they just go and hold toilet papers because that's panic buying holding is the name of the game when pandemic takes over but it's time for the church to be different it's time for us to give it's time for us to help one another. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. It is time for us to find out what is a pressing need, especially if there are old people that are stuck up in homes and they are not able to move out. There are several churches that have come up with plans if they, if they would call the church that some other members of the church can go and help. In case you have more masks and you have certain stocks in your own home, maybe pass it on to others within the church. Maybe if you have stocked up and if there be a situation that arises that there's not enough food for some people because they do not have the money or they do not have the means or, or they're not able to go and buy, that would we be able to share with others in times such as this? Because the Word of God is asking us to meet the pressing needs of people. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 14 we read, Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Hey, this is unprecedented times. and We need unique responses. May we as a church that is not able to gather together in buildings or even in our homes because we have a curfew, which is a great wise move by our nation. It's time that we respond the right way. Lord, we humble ourselves and we intercede. And may this COVID-19, or Father, this pandemic that is sweeping across this nation and the nations of the world, 
stop and halt. May we be people who's, who are okay to slow down, okay to even be locked down, but we respond the right way by reflecting on times such as this and be prayerful. And some of you, you, you even you need to be writing down certain things. Some of you need to start writing out your assignments uh, that you need to be uh, doing for your Antioch school courses. Or some of you need to reflect on the sixth session of each of our booklets that have been circulated amongst our life groups. The sixth section is about, about journaling. Sixth session is about, about reflecting. Sixth session is about memorizing certain verses. It's time for us to do that. It's time to increase in faith. And do not fear. It is time that we are, yes, socially connected more and more. Take that phone, call someone. And this morning, hey, this is time to help one another. This is not time to hoard and think just about yourself. This is time to think about one another. It's a joy, it's a privilege for us to meet together on online. And we pray that God would be with you, help you through this difficult season that we all are going through. May God be with you. Amen. And amen, amen.